What crime did Lisa Kudrow's character go to prison for? What does Steve Carell think about blasting off in real life? And what U.S. space secrets does the scene with Marcus the Monkey reveal? Hi, I'm Clive, and here is the hidden side of Space Force. Is it a lot like the real Space Force? In December 2019, the U.S. got its own General Naird. In real life, it's former Air Force General Jay Raymond, who was appointed as the first Chief of Space Operations. And though his job is nothing but serious, the real U.S. Space Force does share a lot of similarities with a Netflix show. For instance, the U.S. Space Force really did have its second-ever satellite launch in May, a topic which Netflix's show explores in its first few episodes. And overall, the filming process was happening parallel to the real Space Force announcing its first achievements. Ben Schwartz shared his feelings about that with Esquire. I have never been in a project that was happening in real life while we're parodying it in a television show. Sometimes they reflect each other so closely that you aren't even sure if it's happening for real or not. Like with the US Space Force recruitment video. Its style and phrases actually make you wonder whether it's a real thing or a clip from Netflix's Space Force. Maybe your purpose on this planet isn't on this planet. Unlike the unnamed POTUS in Space Force, Trump never demanded boots on the moon by 2024. Still, the Trump administration wants astronauts to return to the lunar surface within the next four years. But in contrast with the show, a real lunar mission will not be organized by Space Force. It would be totally under the control of NASA. Why? Because in real life, Space Force remains focused on satellite protection. Truth be told, the show's creator Greg Daniels didn't let the real Space Force activities concern him that much. We're treating it like we had the same jumping off points, but this is the slightly parallel universe version of Space Force, he says. But he did make his team read the Air Force handbook and visit SpaceX a couple of times to discuss details with their engineers. Hidden Secrets to Characters' Names Daniels wouldn't be the genius he is if he didn't have some fun with the names of his characters. For instance, Mark Naird's manager, who we know as Tony Scarapaducci, is actually a satire of a real person, Anthony Scaramucci. He was Trump's former communication director, who only lasted 10 days on the job. And when in episode 3 we meet the young congresswoman from New York, Annabella Isidro Campos, she is very similar to the real-life congresswoman from New York, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Even Mark Naird's antagonist, Kurt Grabeston, has a trick to his name, which perfectly points out his misogynist character. Just listen. Kirk grab ass ton. And what about Steve Carell's character? There's nothing special about his name, though many fans claim that his character is similar to Michael Scott from The Office. Truth be told, Mark Naird is nothing like Michael Scott. He is grounded and wise, a full four-star general, and a reliable husband and dad. Nothing like the forever childish Michael Scott with his never-ending desire to be the center of attention. Even though Mark does have his space office and Greg Daniels as the show creator, those are basically the only similarities to his iconic former character. By the way, Steve Carell was the one who co-created Space Force, and so he had the opportunity to make Mark Nair the way he wanted. Which leads us to... The story of two words. There was no show. There was no idea. It was really based on nothing except the name that made everybody laugh. Just two words were enough for Greg Daniels and Steve Carell to create the whole show. However, many critics state that Space Force feels shallow and simply unbelievable, that some of the stories are left without any decent development, like the one with Nair's wife. But we will talk about Lisa Kudrow's character a bit later, so stay tuned. Despite critics' comments that Space Force wasted too much money, without focusing enough on the content, there are many aspects of the show that make it really worth watching. The cast is brilliant, and many jokes are real killers. Just recall those scenes with Marcus the monkey and Theodore the dog, who were assigned the task of repairing the spacecraft. Hilarious as it was, Space Force's monkey mission scene actually highlights the dark history of animal astronauts. Dark Side of the Moon <laughs> <laughs> It's <laughs> cute, though. While no animals have repaired any satellites or been kidnapped by Chinese spacecrafts for real, scientists do have a long and often sad history of experimenting with animals in space. After Apollo 11 landed a man on the moon, the range of animals in space missions included rabbits, turtles, spiders, and even jellyfish. This practice has been met with criticism from animal rights activists over the decades. But according to NASA, these animals performed a service to their respective countries that no human could or would have performed. And though many of those animals didn't return to Earth, we hope at least the kidnapped monkey Marcus, whom we never hear of or see again following his capture in Episode 2 of Space Force, had better luck. Steve Carell himself 
himself was asked whether he has a desire to visit space one day. But based on his experience of wearing an astronaut suit in one of the episodes, when he couldn't move his arms properly, Steve's answer wasn't really positive. Come on. Not, you wouldn't I, want to be not, an astronaut. Not a tiny bit of me would ever want to do that. I live in fear of doing something like that. Do you feel the same way about being an astronaut? Let us know in the comments. Meanwhile, we will finally try to figure out what happened to Lisa Kudrow's character and why she is in prison. The Mystery of Maggie's Crime As we know from the first episode, Mark, Maggie, and their daughter Erin were living happily together in Washington before he was called to head up Space Force. Then the time jumps forward a year and Maggie is now in prison. So, most likely, she was on trial during that year's gap and probably committed the crime in that period, too. Later, Mark and his daughter visit Maggie in prison, but the show never speaks about what she actually did. Even when she runs away from prison with her new girlfriend, no one spills the beans as to what her crime was. At one point, Mark says that Maggie committed a very serious crime. And at other times, different characters mention that Maggie will be locked up for at least 40 years. And one time, it's specified that her sentence is 40 to 60 years. That kind of sentence normally only comes with crimes like murder, sex crimes, and drug trafficking. But this is a comedy show, so it's doubtful it would be something like that. The other option is that her sentence is actually one big mistake and that Maggie was either wrongfully convicted, or maybe she even took the fall for Mark himself? Greg Daniels couldn't hide from this question and gave his response on the subject. At the moment, we're kind of enjoying the mystery around it and the question marks that it raises. It causes you to lean in because we're dropping little hints about what it is and how serious it was. You didn't miss anything. It's not in there, Daniels revealed. Well, that's definitely a hook for season two, isn't it? And speaking of, as the series events are set in the current time, real life incidents should occur in the show as well. Greg Daniels confirmed that he is concerned about how to handle the subject of the pandemic, for instance. And perhaps we might even see how Elon Musk sends his first men to the satellite as well? What are your predictions about season two? Share them with us in the comments. And as always, thanks for staying awesome.